I'm looking at the wound and I'm thinking he can't possibly survive. It was so, the wound was so great and it looked, you could see that it, it, it had done internal damage and you could see that it, it was disrupting a lot of things to just make you know that. Uh, and Ralph Abernathy has him and he's holding him and uh, he's got his arms around him and he's whispering in his ear. King never says anything. I don't think he could talk. There was a storm that night before when he made that speech. Just shaking that old rooms. There was just this vibe that something wasn't right. And indeed, turned out it wasn't. I was in my room, which is on the ground floor to the left of uh, Dr. King's room. But the explosion, when, King, when it was the bullet that killed King, it was so great, I thought someone had bombed the motel. If the police officer asked me where the shot came from, I never was able to even answer him. I, went, I was so sure that, that it was the police attacking us. The police ran on by, and then I ran to the balcony where Ralph Abernathy was comforting Dr. King, who had this huge wound in uh, his neck and jaw. That would have been on the right side, he was, the way he was laying. And Ralph Abernathy has him and he's holding him and his, uh, he's got his arms around him and he's whispering in his ear. King never says anything. I don't think he could talk. And uh, I notice his eyes, they are, uh, the eyes are just, they, you could see they're just not functional. It looked like someone had put something in there and stirred it up. It was, there was no definition, no nothing. And uh, after that, I began to do what reporters do, just making my notes, writing everything down. And, uh, and there was a payphone in the alley uh, outside of the little restaurant there. And I was able to go there and uh, call New York and give them the first uh, bulletin about what had happened. 